30, a night of fun turning violent with a brawl at Dave & Buster's, an employee attack during that melee. Hundreds of children waiting too long for services they need. The collective call for change tonight. And the nation preparing to hear what President Biden has to say in tonight's State of the Union address. We begin with a large brawl at Dave & Buster's in Henrietta. Good evening, I'm Matt Malloy. Authorities say this involves both middle and high school age kids. 13 Whams, Chase Howell explains, police say they are close to making arrests. Chase? Matt, MCSO told me today we could see this investigation close by the end of the week as they're following up on some strong leads. It was anything but fun at Dave & Buster's Saturday. <laughs> This cell phone video showing a group of 20 juveniles allegedly attacking a Dave & Buster's employee in Henrietta, sending him to the hospital. He was struck in the head by somebody with a closed fist, part of the group, which then led to him falling on the ground. Once he was down on the ground, they were punching and kicking him. Sergeant Keith Ball says those juveniles, middle and high school age kids. Deputies say the fight began after they were asked to leave for misbehaving. It's kind of sad, actually, because here's a guy that just showed up for work. You know, he's trying to earn a buck. He didn't expect his job to end with him on a trip to a hospital because some kids didn't know how to act in a public place. This sign located on Dave & Buster's front door says persons under 18 may enter the premise with a guardian who is at least 25 years in age. Though it's still unclear whether they were with the guardian or not at the time of the incident. Sergeant Ball says while they are pursuing charges, he's worried this could happen again. There's no repercussions, there's no responsibility on their part, and until we put responsibility on their part and hold them accountable for it, I don't know how we're going to break this, this cycle. I reached out to the Dave & Buster's general manager, but have not heard back. Anyone with additional information about this investigation is asked to call the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. We have new developments tonight related to the former Greece police chief, Drew Forsyth's DWI crash in 2021. The former deputy chief saying he has become the scapegoat for the former chief's crash and is now taking the Greece Police Department and the town to court. Casey Vocal claims he was retaliated against for raising concerns about how that case was handled. 13 Wham's Carla Rogner read through that federal lawsuit and has the latest information for us tonight. Carla, good evening. Yeah, good evening, Matt. Casey Vocal says he called the district attorney to request an independent investigation into then police chief Drew Forsyth's crash after he became suspicious about a possible cover up by the town. That's when he says town leaders retaliated. In October 2021, then Greece Police Chief Drew Forsyth crashed his department-issued SUV into a guardrail on 390. He called for help on his police radio. Can you hear me in English in North Greece? I had a, uh, a deer carried from, from my room. 10 4 The responding officers did not do a field sobriety test and took their police chief home. According to this federal lawsuit, it was the next day at work when then-Deputy Chief Casey Volkel became suspicious about possible misconduct. He called the district attorney and asked her to investigate. The lawsuit alleges in retaliation for making that call, Town Supervisor Bill Rylick illegally demoted Volkel four rankings from his position as Deputy Chief to a patrolman. The lawsuit accuses Rylick, his deputy supervisor, Michelle Marini, and the police department of orchestrating the destruction of Deputy Chief Vogel's career to protect their own reputations. The crash happened in the weeks before the November 2021 election, when Supervisor Rylick was running to be re-elected. Vogel alleges Rylick seemed more concerned with his campaign than the crash. It says Rylick had shared false information with the public and allowed Forsyth to remain as police chief as his department investigated his own crash. The police department did conduct an internal investigation funded by taxpayers, but Vocal calls it a sham report and says it was used to retaliate against him and the other officers who cooperated with the DA's investigation. Forsyth resigned a week after the crash and later pleaded guilty to driving while intoxicated in December 2021. Vocal's lawyer shared a statement saying, Our system is broken when an honest police officer's life can be ruined for doing the right thing. Casey Vocal continues to serve the Greece Police Department as a patrolman, the position he started his career in 19 years before the crash. 
And Volkel is asking to be reinstated as deputy chief of police in Greece and for at least $2 million in damages. The town supervisor, deputy supervisor and police department all declined to comment on the lawsuit. Customers had another chance to vent their frustrations about RG&E and NYSEG today, this time in person. It follows months of complaints about service and soaring bills. Cheyenne Walker joining us live from City Hall tonight where customers voice those concerns. Cheyenne, good evening. Good evening, Matt. The City Hall chambers were full this afternoon with frustrated customers saying that they were being billed wrong and they were being charged way too much. The first series of in-person public forums started today in Rochester. RG&E and and I said customers sounding off. I was billed regularly up until this past April, then no bills until October, then two bills in November, then one bill in January, and now I'm current and no bill pending. And here we are in February already. So the problem wasn't fixed, it isn't fixed, it's repeating itself, that's not acceptable to me. I've noticed recently in my own billing that my bills have been estimated, but they've been excessively high. $269 then jumped to the 300s, then last month it was 411, and this bill is for $873. The state launched an investigation in the utility companies in October of last year after a spike of customer complaints from billing errors to bad customer service. All of a sudden we saw this increase in complaints coming in from NICE again from RG&E. And so he, he did an investigation of the complaints and he saw that the complaints that had come in between July of last year and the end of the year were more than 60 times as many as the previous two years combined. In fact, last month alone, Berkeley says the state received almost 800 customer complaints. Hundreds of customers showing up to these forums now, including mayors and town supervisors. Today I'm speaking on behalf of all the residents of Brighton that have experienced a wide range of billing issues with our G&E over the past two years or so, and there are hundreds of them. The Public Service Commission will use the customer feedback from these forms in their investigation. The resolution at this point is unclear, but for customers, something has to give. It's not like I can say, gee, I can go to Walmart instead of going to Target. I have to go to RG&E, so I need to know that they're dependable. And at this point, my jury says they are not dependable. And the Public Service Commission will be taking complaints up until March 1st. Investigators will look into these complaints in order to determine their next steps in the investigation. Right now, RG&E and NYSEG are cooperating with the investigation and they're making investments for improvements on their customer service.